Oh, hey there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this blanket ladder made out of red elm and booyah plugs for a decorative accent said to be in a little girl's bedroom. So, if you're interested in figuring out how this was built, seeing the journey, go ahead and follow along and I'll show you how it's built. Immediately you can see that this board has a substantial cup to it, something that a joiner couldn't even take care of. We'll have to deal with this at a little bit of a later step. So the first step is going to be to rip the board in order to make the rails. For me, Red Elm only comes in 4-4 four, four stock, and I want my rails to be a bit thicker than that, so I'm going to have to end up laminating the board together which actually will help with the cupping, as you'll see a little bit later on. So because I'm gonna laminate the boards, I actually need to have four boards, two for one rail and then two for the other. So I'm gonna run this through. I'm gonna get my four boards out of this, cutting them to about one and seven eighths inches. Red Elm has a tendency to be a little squirrely, so with the cuts, it actually did take me a little long because I was cutting through some grains that kept crisscrossing. But in the end, you can see I got one, two, three. And then finally, on my last pass, I'm going to get that fourth board with very little waste left over. So here you can see the full magnitude of that cup as I start to line them up and then kind of put it where they are facing one another. The reason I'm having them face one another is I'm going to put these in clamps and I am going to lam laminate them together as I said before. The glue I'm hoping will hold and effectively the bend from one will counteract the bend from the other and it'll straighten it out so I'm using some parallel clamps to begin with to get a really nice tight clamp and get everything aligned fairly well i'm going to send all this through the planer and joiner so it doesn't have to be perfect but it'll give me a really really good starting point Here I'm just adding the last bit of painter's tape to the clamp to go and protect that from any glue squeeze out. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the boards so that all the glue faces will be up. So you can see that the cup on all of them is facing up. Then take some Type-On 2 and apply a liberal amount to all of the faces of the board. Uh, in this step, I was actually a little rushed and I did not get as much glue down as I wanted to have. Um, but I was able to use a brush and wipe out the glue on the board, spreading it fairly evenly, which you'll see coming up in a second. With the last bit of glue getting spread out, 
I then went and oriented the boards the way that they needed to be once again with two boards facing in towards one another with where the glue is applied uh, to get that laminated board closing up the parallel clamps was the very first step of this working my way down making sure that the ends of the board were fairly aligned um, but knowing that these were all going to go through the joiner and planer so i did have a little bit of wiggle room with that Once I got the parallel clamps on, I began working from one end to the other with the remaining clamps in my shop. Uh, as the old additive goes, I felt like I just did not have enough clamps, but I did make it work for the ones that I did have. Uh, they gave me an opportunity to apply even pressure to that glue joint and create a nice tight seam. As I put these final few clamps on, you can see that the boards and the alignment is still quite rough um, and they do need some milling. That's where I actually don't have any footage. I'm fortunate enough to have a buddy that has a joiner and planer. So I took them over to his house, ran them through. And as you can see in this shot right here, was able to get some beautifully milled rails out of those clamps. If you have the opportunity to go ahead and give him a follow, I'm gonna to try to do one of them fancy YouTube things and provide a link on the screen. He's on Instagram, at Hidden Grain. Great page, great content. Uh, much cooler projects than I have. With the rails now milled, uh, the next step is to cut them down to size. I arbitrarily picked six feet because this is gonna go in my daughter's room. It was a good height for her to grow into, but also to be able to consistently reach the top rung. I marked one board, transferred it over to the other board. By this time, I had already put in a fresh cut on the end of both boards, so I had a nice even end to measure from. So I just took both those over to the chop saw, set them up, and made my cuts. Before I moved any farther with the rails, I wanted to add a nice round over to the edges to soften up the rails. So I grabbed my trim router, I popped an eighth inch round over bit, set the bit and did some test cuts on the scrap piece of the rail that I previously cut off. Once I got that set where it was a nice smooth transition, I then proceeded to add the round over to all four edges of each rail. As you saw when I got to the ends, the rail wanted to move around a lot on me and it was a little challenging to clean those off. I opted after that to grab one of my dovetail clamps, pop that right in the center and that did a good enough job of holding it with my offhand 
to let me get a really nice smooth round over on the rail. With the rails now finished, it was time to start thinking about the rungs. Pulled out another piece of scrap red on that I had and started to try to figure out the size of the rungs and then also how many rungs I was planning on having on the ladder. Like I said, the ladder was six feet. So I got out my tape measure, set it there, started to try to evenly space some rail markings along the ladder, trying to make it both accessible and enough space in between where blankets could easily fit in there. I settled on having my first rung at 12 inches off the ground, and then from there every two and a half feet. With that layout, that gave me four rungs, which turned out to be very nice because my board was a little over six inches wide. I planned on having the rungs cut to one and a quarter inches, as you can see me cutting here, and that let me get the four rungs out of one width of the board. So I cut my board to be 18 inches, meaning that the rungs would be 18 inches long. Once again, kind of planning to have a little bit of a larger area for that blanket to go in. Once I got the four rungs cut out, I tossed them through the round over bit, giving them a really nice smooth finish matching the rails. The next step was figuring out location for attaching my rungs. You could use dominoes to do this, dowels, pocket holes. I ended up settling on screws and plugs because in my daughter's room, I have some more pieces made out of red elm and those have embouya plugs. So I wanted to match that style. So the first thing was I used the center mark to find the dead center of the board. I then took my ruler and put that on my center mark and then from the edge once i figured out to not use the tenth side of the ruler and to use the fractional side of the ruler i took and i marked three eighths of an inch a quarter of an inch from each side of that one of the two um but then i set my combination square to that distance and i replicated those marks all the way down the ladder where i had set my locations for each rung I then took each rail over to the drill press. In there, I had a 3 8 Forstner bit set to go down roughly a quarter to 3 8 of an inch and drilled a hole on each of those marks. You can see that I have two holes for each rung just to make sure it doesn't spin. But by the end of that, I have those replicated throughout for once again along each board. The next step, you can see that I am determining the thickness of my rail with a dial caliper, and then I find the exact thickness of my rung. I'm doing this so I can center my rung on the rail. Truthfully, this is a bit of overkill. I knew that my rail was about one and three quarters, and I knew my rung was about one and a quarter. So I could have just done some simple math from there and gotten it close enough to especially where the eye couldn't see. But I had the calipers and I decided to just apply them here. So I found the difference between the two values, which would be the spacing total from the rail to the rung. I then halved it to show how much distance I had to be from the rail to the edge of the rung. I then used a deck of cards to find a thickness of cards that match that exact distance. I laid my rail down, I laid my cards down, and I put my rung on top of my rail. And as you can see, that helped me set up 
um, my rung exactly where it needed to be. I then took some clamps, put them on each rail, put my rung in between. On my rung, you can see already that I have marked center on that and I've aligned it to my rail mark. I drilled a pilot hole through the previously drilled Forstner holes and that let me uh, put a pre-drilled hole in for the screw. I attached the screw to each to secure the rung to the rail and then I worked my way down uh, throughout the rest of the ladder. So as you can see at this point, I have what pretty much could be a blanket ladder. I got it together here and with it all dry fit, I pulled the screws out because I wanted to do some final sanding and also finish it beforehand. Because this is a blanket ladder, I'm not gonna worry about applying glue to my joints. It's a butt joint anyways with end grain to face grain so it wouldn't hold that much um, and with it not supporting uh, a ton of weight i'm not going to worry about applying glue to that so you can see here i'm just marking my rungs to make sure i get them back in the correct spot marking what side is up and then left and right hit all of my pieces with some 120 sandpaper to clean everything up get rid of any pencil marks and get it ready for finish for this i'm using vesting single coat hard wax oil with a hardener, uh, the pure finish, just to bring out the color of that red elm. You can see, I'm gonna throw it on the rung. I'm just using a non-woven cloth to do so, putting it on there for about five minutes uh, on three of the four sides and all four sides of the rungs. The reason I'm not doing the fourth side is that is what is going to accept the plugs and I need to get my fasteners on my plugs in and flush cut before I finish that side. Once I get all the oil wiped on, I then take a paper towel and wipe it off, making sure that I get every bit of leftover oil. I then take the rails and once again attach the rungs to each side using those markings that I previously made to make sure that I get everything nice and aligned and I have the correct rung for each location. Once I finish one side, I flip that over and do the exact same thing to the rail on the other side, getting the ladder completely put back together as you can see right here. The last step for this build was taking care of the plugs to cover up those holes on the side of the rails. To do this, I'm using a 3 8 Montana brand plug cutter. This does a really nice job of creating a tapered plug which will really easily go into my Forstner hole that I drilled before. The what I'm using for this is in Booyah, as I mentioned before, it creates a really nice contrast with that red elm, stands out, and then when you put some oil on it, it has a beautiful pop to it. So I get the plugs drilled about four fifths of the way through. I then run the board through the bandsaw. Here you can see I just have a four by four put up there for a fence. Works well enough for now. And then from there I get these plugs. 
With the plugs cut, next up is to add them to the rails to cover up the holes. First off is a little glue to hold them in place. And then because they have that taper, they slide into each of the holes really nicely. A couple wax from the rubber mallet does a good enough drive, job driving them in and they'll create a nice tight seam with no visible gaps. The last step is probably the most satisfying step and that's gonna be flush cutting the plugs. I don't know why to this day I love this so much but there is something uh, about this step that I often look forward to if I get to do it within a build. Uh, I'm just using a five inch flush trim saw here. It works really well to clean these up and not mar the wood. And as you can see right here, it leaves a beautiful finish that requires hardly any sanding after. Last bit of finish and that caps off this project. wraps up this project if you like what you saw please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and follow me on instagram at jpatwoodcraft until next time